Hey guys, it's Rachel from Little Green Lamb. Today I'm doing the Tis the Season book tag, which was created by Richard Media Geek, and I'm going to put his video in the down bar, so you should definitely go check that out. I feel like I'm not in center of frame. I just have, like, my Christmas stuff over here, which will be gone soon, because obviously it's Christmas soon, um, but I have my presents for my family over here, so it's kind of taking up my filming space, which is quite unfortunate. Um, but anyway, we'll get on to the questions. So question one is, do you have a favorite winter read? Now, my favorite winter read of late is the Winter Street series by Ellen Hildebrand. I mentioned this series, I feel like it's so many wintry tags, but this is a series that takes place um, basically Christmas Eve, Christmas time, and Boxing Day. Like, I believe it's those three days usually, or a few days before Christmas. And it centers around the Quinn family, and I haven't read this one yet. I'm actually going to be starting this one either tonight or tomorrow. Um, by the time you see this video, I will probably be done the book because I'm posting this on Christmas Eve. And my goal is to be finished this by Christmas Eve, but I'm super excited. It's the fourth and final book in the series, and yeah, just super excited. Number two is Find a Book with Blue on the Cover. And for this, I picked How to Fall in Love by Cecilia Ahern. And I just think this blue book, not only is it blue, but it's kind of Christmassy in a way. I know it's kind of summery, but like it can kind of look a bit Christmassy, I think. So I'm just going to go with that. Number three is Find a Book You'd Use as a Star on Top of a Christmas Tree. And I picked Eight Spells a Week. Um, this is a Sabrina the Teenage Witch book. It's number 17. I picked this one because it has a star border. It's gold because we put a star on the tree at like, my house. Um, so it has a star border. It's kind of a goldy, pretty color. It has some shiny, shimmery stuff. And I just find it looks very festive. Number four is pick one fictional place that would be perfect for a winter vacation. And I have to say, I don't have any. I can't think of any. I don't read a lot of fantasy books or books that take place in a different world. That's why it's hard because I don't have a lot of fictional places I read about. A lot of the places I read about are real life locations. So I don't really know what to pick for that one. Number five is pick one fictional character you take with you on your winter vacation. And personally, I would take Maria from Madonna and a Fur Coat by Sabahattin Ali. And the reason I take Maria is personally, I relate to um, a lot of the things that like the way she carries herself is something that I find very admirable and it's something I strive for. Like I strive to be a very completely honest person, um, which I think I've been doing a pretty good job at, but like I always try to be honest, but honest in an articulate way where I'm, even if I'm speaking the truth, it's done in a way that is polite, which I'm not never like mean to people when it comes to the truth, but like polite, but articulate carries herself with an air of confidence, but stands up for themselves and is able to articulate what they want to others. That's something I strive to be. Um, so I really like this character and I feel like if we were out on vacation together, like besides like there's certain parts in this book where it's like certain Maria parts that's like maybe wouldn't be the best for that but like I feel like for the most part because I like her personality I feel like she could tell me some really good stories about her life and yeah might not be like the most conventional choice but an interesting one then nonetheless to me. Number six is name one book on your wish list this year, and for that I picked Ranger Games by Ben Blum, and this is a book pretty much about, oh my gosh, I'm going to forget the synopsis and butcher it horribly, but it just sounds like a really interesting book. It's basically about this boy who, I believe it's either his brother or his cousin, I forget, because I haven't read it yet, so, but it's just about his brother or his cousin who is like an all-American, like, good boy, like, he doesn't do anything wrong, and one day he helps rob a bank, and it's kind of the kid coming to terms of being like, why did this person do this when this person acted this certain way and it just sounds very interesting to me number seven is favorite holiday drink treat and movie okay so my favorite holiday drink is eggnog because it's seasonal and i just love it so much i can't really drink it to abundance either so i can never really get sick of it because i am lactose intolerant so i have to drink it on specific days when i know like i'm not going out for a few hours which has been increasingly hard because i feel like this month has been very busy so, got to try to sneak it in there. Um, my favorite holiday treat is crinkle cookies. Yes, crinkle cookies, that's for sure. You know, there's so many holiday treats that I love, but these cookies are basically like a chocolate cookie, and they're frozen, and then you put like white baking, baking sugar, that'd be the right word, on top. And we only have them at Christmas time. Or my other favorite would be licorice and chocolate, which is basically like you cut up like nib licorice, and you dip it in chocolate, and then you put it in the fridge, and it's so good love it so much. That I ate so much of last week. Actually this week. That's a lie. It was early this week. And my favorite Christmas movie for nostalgia reasons is Arthur's Perfect Christmas. 
and this is my favorite Christmas film I would say because it holds a lot like I watched it so much as a child we had the VHS um, my cousin who I hang out who's one of my best friends we just watched it this year like we watch it pretty much every year whether it be August which we usually watch in August which makes no sense but I just really love it. I find it's a good Christmas film. It still makes me laugh. It makes me feel nostalgic. I really like the holiday representation. They represent a lot of different holidays in this film, which I think it's good for like, not only for exposure for me because I see so many Christmas films and it's interesting to see um, other holidays represented in media besides like Christmas. And I say Hanukkah gets a bit of representation, but not as much. So it's interesting seeing holidays like Kwanzaa and I believe it was a Festival of Lights was another one represented in this film. So I just really like seeing that representation. It's a funny movie and um, we just remember so many things from being children and singing along to the songs and even my siblings like we still all enjoy it. like it's still a classic in our house. It's only an hour so it's a short film to watch and if you haven't seen it and you're an adult and you like heard about Arthur I would definitely give it a shot and especially if you have like um, anybody small in your life like if you have like a child like a niece, nephew, son, daughter, anything like that definitely t turn it on because this one is good and it's on YouTube I think but really enjoy it like I have a lot of Christmas films I love but that's one I always watch and yes that's a tis the season book tag I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later bye